Greetings, everyone. This is Mr. Mall. Today I'm doing a podcast on what I call the Keepa problem solving strategy. Um, and this is a problem solving strategy that we're going to use for problems dealing with constantly accelerated motion and using the kinematic equations to solve for unknown variables. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started here today. First off, let's talk about what Keepa stands for. Keepa is an, ac is an acronym that we're going to use to approach problem solving uh, with these types of problems. So the first thing that we have to do using keep a problem solving strategy is to look at all the variables of motion uh, that we know and figure out what our knowns are and what we're looking for or our unknowns. Once we have some information uh, we're going to take those knowns and unknowns and find an equation that relates them all. Uh, once we have an equation we can rearrange it and then we can solve for our unknown by plugging in the values of our knowns, solving for our unknown, and getting our final answer. So I'd like to go through a couple problems with you uh, and show you how this method is going to work, but first we need to look at those three equations that we're going to be using for these types of problems. Okay. So the three equations that we have uh, are, are three kinematic equations that we derived earlier in the unit. The first one, remember, came from our position time graph. We kind of rearranged it a little bit, um, and we have this equation here. This equation is going to relate displacement, acceleration, initial velocity, and time. So if I have three of these four variables, I can use this first equation. The second equation came from the velocity time graph. Um, remember the car on the hill lab? We were able to figure out what the velocity versus time graph looked like. That equation rearranged. We could have A over equals delta V over delta T. Either one of these versions work. This equation essentially relates final velocity, acceleration, time, and initial velocity. So if I have three of these four, this is the equation I will use. And then the last one uh, we derived from the velocity time graph. Um, and this final equation relates final velocity, initial velocity, acceleration, and displacement. So if I have three of these four variables, then I know I can solve for an unknown. So how is this going to play out in a problem? Let's go ahead and go through uh, a couple problems together. So the first question says, a bullet train slows down from 50 meters per second to 40 meters per second in 500 meters. What is its acceleration? So what may be helpful for some of these problems is, when in doubt, to kind of draw out what's going on. So if I have my little train here, and it's speeding along, uh, it looks like it starts out moving okay, 50 meters per second and it goes to 40 meters per second. Um, so if it starts out moving, you maybe want to draw a little motion map here. What's my vehicle doing? And then it slows to 40 meters per second uh, in 500 meters. So it's slowing down. Um, it takes 500 meters to do this. Okay, 500 meters. It starts out going 50 meters per second. And then it says uh, in, in, in a couple, after some period of time, it gets down to 40 meters per second. So maybe a uh, drawing might help, uh, help with this. If you wanted to put acceleration vectors, we could. We can see that the velocity is numerically decreasing. Okay, we're going to assume it's constant acceleration. Uh, so I could draw my velocity or my acceleration vectors on there. Could do that also. So how are we going to use this keepa? The first thing we need to do is we need to write out our knowns. Okay, this is the K in the acronym keepa. So I'm going to look at the problem and I'm going to look at what information they give me. Um, slows from 50 meters per second to 40. Well, if I start going 50 meters per second, this is just going to be my initial velocity. How fast we're going initially. So I'm going to go ahead and write on here. We know our initial velocity is equal to 50 meters per second. Okay, that's something we know. Um, it says it slows down to 40 meters per second, so we know our final velocity. Final velocity is equal to 40 meters per second. Um, what else do we know? It says this takes place over 500 meters. So meters is a unit of, of distance or also could be a unit of displacement. So this 500 meters is actually the displacement of the train, delta x. So I'm going to go ahead and put that as something I know. We know uh, delta x, our change in position, 
our displacement is 500 meters. And then last but not least, we need to write down, uh, that's all the information given in the problem so far. And it says, what is the acceleration? So I'm going to put a little A for acceleration, and I'm going to put a question mark. Okay, what, what is my acceleration? I don't know. We're going to find out. This is the K step. This is my knowns. I'm writing my knowns and my unknowns in a nice kind of, uh, a nice easy way to see all those things at once. Well, the next step in KIPA is to find an E equation. So I need to come up with an equation that relates these variables. So I'm going to look at that, that table. Um, I'm going to look at that list of equations and find which equation relates all four of these variables. And I want you to do that now. And as you're looking over that list, you should notice that the only one that relates all four of those is that kind of funky one that we derived. Okay, so vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a delta x. This is the only equation that will relate all those four variables at the same time in kind of one step. So what I like to do, um, and a lot of uh, physics, um, uh, physics instructors or physics engineers tend to rearrange equations first and then plug answers in. So I'm going to go ahead and model for you. Uh, I'm going to solve for, we need acceleration, so we need to get this by itself. So what I like to do is instead of plugging everything in, um, what I like to do is rearrange everything, and you can do it any way you'd like. But I'm going to go ahead and get A by itself before I start plugging in all these numbers. Okay, so I'm going to subtract VI squared from both sides, uh, and I'm going to rewrite VF squared minus VI squared uh, is equal to 2A delta X. To isolate A, we're going to divide both sides by 2 delta X. And I'm going to rewrite my equation in a way that has that variable isolated that I'm looking for. So acceleration is equal to vf squared minus vi squared, all divided by 2 delta x. Okay, so this will be my equation now that I can use. It relates to all those variables and it solves for a. All right, so what we need to do now is the next step of KIPA is the p. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and plug all of our variables that we know into the equation to solve for our unknown. So acceleration is equal to Vf squared. I look over here, Vf I know is 40 meters per second. So we're going to go ahead and put that value squared. Uh, I'm going to put it in parentheses, 40 meters per second. And we're going to square that. And then I need to subtract Vi squared. I know Vi. It was 50 meters per second. So I subtract Vi squared, 50 meters per second. Uh, and I'm going to square that. And then what I have next, uh, and that's all going to be divided by 2 times delta x. And my delta x was um, 500 meters. OK, so once I plug all this in, um, we can punch that in our calculator. And we'll get our final answer. And the final answer is going to be 0 0.9 meters per second per second will be how the units work out um, meters per second per second or meters per second squared circle my final answer uh, and there, there it is there's keep up um, so kind of going through and there's our answer Oops. answer now what you can do is if you want to, to to arrange these all horizontally I couldn't really fit it on my page but you could arrange that all horizontally. Um, so this is how we can do uh, one of these keeper problems. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and do one more for you, um, just so you can get some more practice. Be very careful with signs. Uh, if you, you can choose which direction you want things to go in. Um, but you're going to find out that the sign of this actually, excuse me, is going to be negative. Um, because look back here at the acceleration vectors. We notice that they should be negative. The velocity is decreasing in numerically. So when I punch all this out, 40 squared minus 50 squared, that would definitely be a negative number. Okay, so it's going to be negative 0.9 meters per second squared. Okay, I'm going to do one more example problem for you. Um, okay, Mr. Jamal's car is zooming down the road at 30 meters per second, but it sees a cat in the road, but I see a cat in the road, uh, and slows uniformly to 10 meters per second over a period of 5 seconds. 
determine the acceleration and displacement of the car. And what you might want to do is as you're reading through things, maybe underlining those important, uh, important details, okay, those important variables that we're looking at. All right, so if, if you want to, um, when in doubt, draw it out. Maybe draw a picture of what's going on. Very similar to the last one. Um, it had some initial speed, and it was slowing down to some speed. Uh, and then we don't know what happens after that. So after five seconds, uh, it doesn't tell us anything else that's going on. You know, it could keep going that same constant speed. We don't know. Okay, it could keep going at the same kind of speed. It might not. But we're really only concerned with this first little part uh, where it changes from 30 meters per second to 10 meters per second. And that takes five seconds. So what I need to do is I need to do a keep up. So I'm going to write out my nouns. Okay, what do we know? Um, zooming down the road at 30 meters per second. So what does that tell me about my car? Well, that's my starting speed. So we're going to go ahead and call that our initial velocity is equal to 30 meters per second. Um, but it sees, I see a cat in the road, and I slow uniformly to 10 meters per second. So that 10 meters per second is how fast I'm going at the end of this time. So we're going to call that our final velocity, 10 meters per second. And this 5 seconds, what variable does that represent? Isn't that the change in time? Delta T is equal to 5 seconds. The question says determine the acceleration of the car and the displacement, delta X equals question mark. And sometimes when we're solving for multiple things, we may have to do multiple steps and maybe even use multiple equations, and we're going to see if we need to do that now. OK, so now that I have my knowns, I'm going to find an equation from that list that relates them all. Um, Acceleration is needed for all of those equations, so I'm going to need to find that first. We're going to start with that equation. Okay. So looking at my list of variables, a velocity, initial, final, delta t, and a, I'm going to look at that list, and I'm going to find out that the second equation is the one that relates all of these. Now that second equation, as you're looking at your notes, can be written two ways. I'm going to go ahead and write it. Um, the way that's already solving for acceleration. Acceleration is equal to delta V over delta T. Uh, and if you have it written, um, it also could be written as final velocity minus initial velocity over delta T. Okay. So I don't care how you uh, start with that, but I do want you to start with your original equation, and then after that you can kind of rearrange it and solve uh, for what you need to. You want to see those steps in your work. Okay, so once I have my equation, um, I kind of rearrange it so I can solve for acceleration. This one already has it done. Uh, I'm going to be able to solve for acceleration. I'm going to be able to plug this in. Solve and plug. So my acceleration is equal to my final velocity. So looking over at my final velocity, I see that it was 10 meters per second. So I'm going to plug that in now. Subtract my initial velocity. I see that was 30 meters per second. And then I'm going to divide that all by the time elapsed. And I see that delta t was 5 seconds. So I have meters per second minus meters per second on top. And then I have seconds on bottom. I'm going to go ahead and plug those in and get a final answer. Negative 4 meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. So there's my acceleration. Um, there's my final answer. and Maybe you have that in a separate column, or however you want to do that. Okay, So maybe we could draw that over there in our final column. Um, well, this is nice. We have the acceleration now. So now we know a little bit more about the car's motion, but I also need the displacement. So I'm going to solve for delta x. And now that I have acceleration, I'm going to put this over here in my data table, meters per second squared. Um, now I have more to work with, so I need to find an equation that I can get delta x from. So I'm going to look through all these equations, and I'm going to look through that list, and I'm going to find an equation that I can solve for delta x. As you're looking through, you should notice that an equation that relates to all those is the first one. So delta x is equal to 1 half a 
delta t squared. Okay, this is kind of like a little part two now. I think we're kind of doing part two of this problem. Uh, and then I have plus vi delta t. So what I need to do now is I need to get this equation uh, and thankfully it's already rearranged for delta x. I don't need to rearrange it before I plug stuff in. I'm actually able to plug stuff in right away. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Delta x is equal to um, 1 half times my acceleration, which was negative 4 meters per second squared. And then I need to multiply that by delta t squared. So we had 5 seconds. Do not forget to square it. Um, most commonly missed mistake is people forget to square this, so I don't want that to be you. So we're going to go ahead and square delta t, and then we add our last vi plus delta t. My initial velocity was 30 meters per second. And that whole term is multiplied by, um, maybe I put this in parentheses so I don't forget I need to multiply, my delta t, which was 5 seconds. So I have these two terms, I'm going to add them together. Uh, when I solve and plug all this in, I'm going to get a delta x is equal to, when I multiply these out, don't forget to add those together, um, we're going to get delta x is going to be equal to 100 meters. Okay, 100 meters. Um, so there's my displacement. Maybe I could write that over in an answer column so that we can kind of see, uh, see, those, see those final answers. Units should work out, units should be your guide. And another, uh, another thing I want to, to kind of give you is that um, there's actually another way we can solve for this displacement. I'm going to go ahead and clear this out because I really want you to see that. So looking back at this problem, if I were to draw a velocity time graph for this situation, we said we started at 30 meters per second, slowed uniformly, uh, this is meters per second, and then we got to 10. So if I look at that, a straight line, um, and we don't know afterwards if the car keeps going or not. I mean, maybe it keeps going 10 meters per second. But in that first five seconds, uh, we can actually get some important information about this. So if this is my velocity time graph, um, how else can I find delta x or displacement? Well, if you remember about velocity time graphs, I can actually shade in this area of velocity time graph to solve for displacement. If I didn't want to use any of those equations, I could actually do this a completely different way and get the same answer. Let me prove it to you. I'm going to go ahead and take this weird funky shape and I'm going to divide it into uh, two shapes I know how to deal with, a square and a triangle. So looking at this little triangle, the area of a triangle is one half the base times the height. Um, the height of this thing is this region here, 30 minus 10, so it's 20 meters per second tall. 1 half the base times the height, or the length times the width of this triangle. Um, it is 5 seconds wide. Okay. So if I multiply that out, uh, this is going to be 50 meters for that top part portion of the graph. If I look at the bottom portion of the graph and find the area of that, uh, it's just base times height. So I have a height of 10 meters per second. And that's going to be times the base of 5 seconds meters per second and seconds cancel, we're left with 50 meters. If I add those two areas together, get the same exact displacement. So that's pretty handy too. Um, and if you had to and you, it said, well, the car keeps moving and you needed more time, uh, maybe you could shade in that region of the graph. Okay, it just depends on what you need. Um, so this is a little crash course on these kinematic problems. Uh, with this background information, we're going to throw you into using Keepa uh, on Friday. I hope this was helpful, and I hope you have a good evening.